Thank you for keeping it KTN Farmers TV. I'm Philip Keitan, and this is AgriNews. The government, through the Ministry of Agriculture, has ordered the new KCC to pay farmers 33 shillings, up from 25 shillings per litre of milk. This follows President Uhuru Kenyatta's economic directive to revamp the dairy sector. Treasury was also directed to release 500 million shillings to purchase excess milk from farmers and another 775 million shillings for construction of new milk processing plants in Nyeri and Nyahururu. Milk farmers have long complained of low prices for the commodity. The situation gets worse when their yields increase during the rainy season. New KCC and other processors have been buying milk at between 19 shillings and 27 shillings at the farm gate. Tulikuwa tunauza shilingi 60 lakini sasa imebidi turudi nyuma kidogo kwa shilingi 50. Shauri ya uchumi. Tafauti ya shilingi 10. Eh, sikia fununu mara kadhaa kwamba kuna watu wanaleta maziwa kutoka nje, wanaleta alafu sasa ya nje ikishakuja inazidi E, kiwango cha e, wanunusi sasa inafanya mpaka mnakuwa muna na mabishano makali sana but farmers can now breathe a sigh of relief as the national treasury releases 500 million shillings to new KCC the money will go into purchasing excess milk from farmers and convert it into powdered milk for future use a further 575 million shillings will go into completing two milk plants in Nyeri and Nyahururu in a bid to enhance their processing capacity. Yes, that three, we have looked at the resources that have been availed and the quantities that we can process within the current capacity. In another few weeks, again, we could raise it to 35, but we think we can absorb that price increase at this particular point. Any farmer who has been supplying milk, who has a contract with KCC, we, we have been receiving all the milk because we have dryers in Kitale, we have dryers in Eldred, we have dryers in Kiganjo, who, which we are able to convert any excess milk into milk powder. So we don't have a problem. Forces of demand and supply have to also be considered. This is not a static price that uh, at milk will be bought at a three. There are many other players in the dairy sector. Every processor in this country will have their own pricing. They will react to this and we expect that as KCC our main responsibility is to stabilize the industry. The 1.07 billion shillings announced by President Kenyatta is part of the 2 billion shillings requested by the state processor. Even as the government promises to tighten the news on milk products suspected to be imported from outside the East African community, the cost of milk production is also a key element. This 16% uh, VAT is not retaliatory. It is the same that is also obtaining in Uganda and in Tanzania. So we are leveling the playing field until we then harmonize so that... Uh, we remove the VAT. We are still producing 8 litres per cow as an average. That will really pose a challenge. So we must address the, the, the component of cost of production, the cost of the productivity at the farm level, so that at least we are able to be competitive. Milk production has grown due to conducive weather conditions from a monthly average of about 15 million litres a year ago to 62 million litres produced per month. The government has set aside an additional 230 million shillings to deal with the locust invasion affecting eight counties in the country, believed to be spreading from Somalia and Ethiopia. Our reporter, George Maringa, is keeping tabs with the ravaging pests and now reports. If the situation had been different, this young boy would perhaps be grazing cattle or would be walking home comfortably. However, he has to wade off a rare type of company along his path, desert locusts. We find a swarm of desert locusts on the move here at Old Tungai village in Isiolo County. For almost an hour, this swarm doesn't appear to stop moving. And the residents here are not a happy lot. <laughs> Farmers 
Swarms of desert locusts started crossing into Kenya on the 20th of December 2019. The insects have since spread to eight counties, including Mandera, Wajir, Marsabit, Garissa, Isiolo, Meru, Samburu and Laikipia. In a bid to deal with the situation and avert a possible food crisis, the government is reinforcing measures to contain the desert locusts. We have enhanced uh, you know, four aircrafts for surveillance, four aircrafts additional for spraying, additional teams for trained in the counties. So it's almost like doubling. You ask me, it's actually doubling. While the Ministry of Agriculture can't quantify the damage caused by the locusts so far, experts warn that this might just be the calm before the storm. The problem is that also, when they, they grow into adults, they immediately breed. Once they lay egg, the adult dies off. And then, they, then the others now will come up. So it is important to be spread at the right stage so that we don't know where they will lay the egg, so that we can continue dealing with the swarm now. We don't know where they lay the egg. Meanwhile, surveillance and spraying continues as these locusts multiply and migrate in their millions. Now, this is just one of the migrating swarm of locusts. Destination unknown. Clearly, the government has an uphill task in spraying and ensuring that these insects do not migrate to other parts of the country. The troubles facing Mumia Sugar Company are not about to end. The company's receiver manager has opted to sell its can to Busia Sugar Company, a move that has angered locals as well as employees. Many had anticipated that the company will roll back to life in 2020. To us, receiver management for our company does not mean him to manage the properties and sell some of the properties to, to people who, who are previous creditors of the, to, to, to the company. No, we want him to put in place a program that will make sure that Momia Sugar Company is back on track. This we shall do. We'll speak to this. I'm personally, like uh, Hondo Barashid, a sugarcane farmer. I was just harvesting for the last uh, 10 days or so. And you won't believe it. Unlike in the, in the past, where the same acreage of my land normally takes seven days to transport the can to the factory, it has taken us 11 days. Why? Because now the farmers in Zoya, because Zoya has closed, have nowhere to take their can, so now we are competing for transport with the people from Bungoma to try and take their can to Butali Sugar and uh, West Kenya Sugar Companies. So we want to speak to this, and people should not take this to be light. Our minds are very clear. We know that unless the receiver manager here is going to increase can production, he's going to go nowhere. We also know that the problem is not the shareholding of the Momia Sugar Company, as proposed by the county government, that they want to take the government shares. No, the problem is in the management of the sugar factory. Learning from what Buka Tet did here in Momias, I am convinced that we should now open, we tender the running of Momia Sugar Company to international bidders so that international farms with the best international practices in sugar production and management and milling should be allowed to run our factory the way Bukatet was running it. We know that also the other problem here in Mia Sugar Company, and we're going to speak to this, is the issue of politicization. Our factory is politicized right from cooks to watchmen to cleaners up to the top. We want to completely using this forum to speak to ourselves as politicians so that we can depoliticize <coughs> the running and management of our sugar factory. Fish is a popular dish in many regions across the world. In Kenya, this is no different. From the picturesque coastal region to the striking sceneries of northern Kenya, Kenyans love their fish with staple meals such as ugali, rice and chapati, just to mention but a few. The other side of the plate, farmers are also benefiting. One such farmer is Jen Waruinge, of Jaza Farm. I think they are shy. Nestled within Dika's Goldview Estate on the Dika Moranga Road is a fish hatching farm named Jaza Fish Farm. It is the brainchild of Jane Waruingi who decided to take the road less 
taken some three years ago. We deal with finger rings, especially in tilapia. And uh, we still have catfish, but at the moment we have tilapia finger rings. And this is just a fish farm. Using her savings, she brought two plots of land in early 2013 on the outskirts of Dika town and started developing them with a fish hatchery in mind. We started fish pro fish business about four years ago now. And uh, I learned more about the fish in the US, in the place called North Carolina in the Wilmington. And then uh, I had an interest to do the fish farming in Kenya. So when I came back, I started building. And this is where we are now. Jane has a knack around tilapia fish production, which she was keen to illustrate to us. For samaki zetu tumeweka kwa pod. Na saira tumeweka kwa pod, inaka most like 14 days to 7 days. Tunaenda tunatoa mayai. Na hii mayai tunatoa kwa mdomo. Tunafungua mdomo, tunatoa mayai, tunaweka kwa, ba, kwa one of the container. Arafi yo mayai, tunakuja, tunaweka hapa. Hii ndi naito equilium. Tikuweka hiyo mayai, tunafungulia hii maji so that inapata the oxygen. Kwa sababu samaki bila oxygen inakufa. So tunaweka hii hapo, hiyo mayai, inakaa for 28 days. Hapa kwa hii equilium. Tunaweka moja, bili, ama tatu. So, ikikaa hapo, and then after 28 days, tuna transfer hiyo watoto, tunakuja hapa, tunaweka net. Inaeto hapa net. Na hiyo hapa net, tunaweka hiyo samaki kwa sababu imetoka kwa yok. Kwa sababu inakuanga ni yok. Yoks tunaweka anga hapa, inatoka. Badaya 28 days, and then tunatoa samaki, tunaweka hapa hiyo watoto. Sasa inakuwa, ikuwa hapa. Araf tuna change, tunatoa hapa, tunaweka kwa pondi ingine. In Ikika for two months, and then the customers come for them. Even though Jasa Farm currently has tilapia and catfish, Jane is planning to gradually fade off the catfish. That is why she has a very small amount of catfish. Squeeze it to too, kidogo kidogo kwa sababu tunataka kuwasha hii mambo ya catfish. And the problem that the challenges kukonayo ni kwa sababu haina market. Haina market, ata ikikua imekua kubwa, Wa, atuna market ya kuuza. Sasa tunaweza kuangaria mambo vile hiko, tuulize serikari, iesaidia watu kwa sababu ya market. Kwa sababu tuko na wakurima wengi sana, wale wako na catfish kwa shamba. Na wanashido pahari watapereka hiyo samaki zao. So we would love to ask the government to help us, so that we can be able to promote our youth, and even the farmers, small scale farmers, so that they can be able to be more agricultural in farm, fish farming. The market for the farm's fingerlings include fish farmers throughout formal central province counties and as far as Nakuru County and other major towns countrywide. My customers wara wanakuja kununua samaki ni small scale farmers. And these small scale farmers, they are from Nyeri, Machakos, Kiambu. And even sometimes you get from uh, even Erodolet. We sell to them and some in Mombasa. Those are the main customers. Wale tukonao wengine wako wa customer wetu ni wengi wanataka kukua na na wanataka kazi ya samaki lakini samaki ya kuuza. Most of them they don't want to do the marketing. Lakini kuna wachache tu wako wala wanataka kuweka samaki kwa sababu ya environment wala wako diyo wakue wanauzia na zingine zao za nyumbani. Keep in tilapia or catfish. Hakuna haja ya kusema una shamba ya kuweka samaki. Shamba ni kama hii. Hii ni ananeka. You can even put a samaki behind your house. You just put a, a small po, a fish pond and have water. Because you cannot keep wa, samaki bila manji. You need a lot of water. The aquaculture industry in Kenya is growing in leaps and bounds. Just like Jane Ringi of Just a Fish Farm has illustrated, seed is viable to practice any form of fish farming in all settings, including urban areas given good climatic conditions. Up next is a roundup of other agricultural stories that are making headlines in other parts of the world.
Olive oil producers in Uruguay enjoyed a record-setting harvest in 2019, according to a new report compiled by Uruguay's Ministry of Livestock, Agriculture and Fisheries. In effect, Uruguay produced 2,775 of extra virgin olive oil, according to the report, an increase of more than 360% over the rolling five-year average. George Pereira, the Uruguayan olive oil sommelier and consultant, said that Uruguay has entered a new state of its olive growing because of the tree cultivation. It has overcome the barrier of producing 1,000 tons of olive oil annually. The 2019 productive harvest was much higher than the previous records and even exceeded the expectations. Climate conditions allowed a very good flowering and consequently a great quantity of fruit with a good quality of oil. In addition to favorable weather, George said many olive trees that had been planted last decade were just now beginning to bear fruit. Pereira added that the increase in cultivated area in the period of 2010 to 2019 has quintupled and these new olive oil trees have entered production. Uruguay's olive oil production is also expected to continue climbing. Previously, the production ceiling sat at around 1,000 tons, with off-year harvest dropping to about 500 tons. Now, Pereira expects to see Uruguay producing a minimum of 1,000 tons per year, even in off years. According to official figures from the Agricultural Ministry, Uruguay has some 20,500 acres of olive trees and managed to export close to 1,000 tons of olive oil at an estimated value of $2.5 US million. Pereira said that exports should continue to grow along with production. Domestic consumption in Uruguay remains quite low, about 500 milliliters per season per year. So Pereira views growing exports as necessary for the survival of the country's 147 olive tree farmers. The World Bank Board of Executive Directors approved today a 40 million US dollar loan for Jamaica to boost income opportunities and job creation in rural areas through the second phase of the Rural Economic Development Initiative. The project will improve access to markets and resilience to climate change for around 200 agricultural and rural tourism, micro, small and medium enterprises. It will also provide training for relevant public sector institutions and partners. Around 70,000 people are expected to benefit from the investments in productive activities, training and capacity building with inclusion of youth and women as a priority. Ozan Sevemli, World Bank representative for Jamaica, said that reducing rural poverty, creating jobs and enhancing climate resilience are critical priorities for Jamaica. He added that the World Bank is delighted to support the continuation of the initiative that will provide additional income opportunities for poor rural households with a focus on youth and women. Nearly half of Jamaica's population lives in rural areas and agriculture accounts for 8% of the country's gross domestic profit, employing over 18% of the active population. Tourism is another critical driver for the Jamaican economy, accounting for over 9% of the GDP in 2016. The initiative will promote linkages between these two key sectors by developing efficient tourism clusters with an emphasis on enhancing connections between producers, service providers and buyers. On today's Saudi Amkulima, we feature vegetable traders in Gong Market who share with us how they have benefited by engaging in sale of agricultural produce. Nafanya kazi hapa Gong Market and uh, I am a student at Kenyatta University main campus along Thika Road. I'm pursuing a degree in Bachelor of Economics and Statistics, I'm second year. Okay, it's, it's a wrong journey and a struggle because this place I get my school fee, maybe my food stuffs, my clothes stuffs, and all that, through this job. Oh, because I'm excited to see that I'm in Zengia, I'm in the total school fees, and for now, I'm in the middle of my life. I'm excited to see that I'm in the middle of my life, I'm in the middle of my life, and I'm in the middle of my life. I'm in the middle of my life, and I'm in the middle of my life. Wakati ule, nilikuwa kijana tu baru baru. Uh, wakati nilianza hii biashara nilikaa miaka mbili. Nikawa, nikaoa. Sasa niko na mke na watoto wanne. 
na imeni zesa kuli kuli pakodi ya shule kama ule mtoto wangu wa kwanza sasa ako university na nalipa na kutokana na mapato ambayo napata kwa hii biashara yangu so ni wanyana za sema ni kuheshimu hii biashara ile mapato inakupea unaweza kujikimu kimaisha Now let's look at how different agricultural commodities are performing in different markets across the country. As our tradition here on AgriNews, we appreciate all of you continue giving us feedback on our social media platforms. And here on AgriNews, we always read some of that feedback. For example, today, one of our viewers says, I'm Constant Mbutu Karaoke. I live in Nairobi, Kayole Estate, asking for advice concerning chicken farming. Where can I get finance while I have my compound? Thank you very much, Constant. What I can tell you is you don't need to start uh, big. You can start small and grow your venture into a reasonable or a respectable uh, chicken venture. And from there, you can approach a cooperative or even a, even a bank, and I'm sure they'll be able to finance you. Another viewer here also says, Hi, I'm Emmanuel from Kakamega. How can I start to keep Kenyeji chicken? And what are the requirements? Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for writing to us. What I can tell you is continue watching KTN Farmers TV and more so our poultry farming show that airs every Monday from 7 p.m. And I'm sure you'll be able to get a lot of what you're asking about. Another viewer here says, please talk about pig farming. Thank you very much for writing to us. Unfortunately, you didn't give us your names or where you're writing us from. Please next time give us your names and where you're writing us from. But in the meantime, we have a show on pig farming called Smart Pigs, which airs every Wednesday from 7 p.m. So keep it uh, KTN Farmers TV. Last but not least, we also have a, a viewer here who says, I like watching KTN Farmers TV. Your programs are educative. Can you link me up with an organic mushroom farmer in Nairobi to teach me how to plant mushrooms? Asante. Thank you very much also for writing to us. Unfortunately, you also didn't give us your names. Uh, at least you've, you said you're in Nairobi. What we can do is uh, one of my colleagues will get in touch with you and give you a contact of a mushroom farmer within Nairobi whom you can contact and y they will be able to help you start or learn more about mushroom farm. That is it from AgriNews Today. I'm Philip Keitan, but I will now leave you with the weather forecast.